This was the race that changed it all last season in 2022 for the 1UP Superstar Series playoffs. Will the exact same thing happen in 2023's rendition? 84 laps will decide that and more as the 1UP Superstar Series takes on Texas Motor Speedway for the third to final race in the entire season, race number 8 of the playoffs. And after what we've seen in the last few weeks at Denver and North Wilkesboro, there's only one man to beat. Can it? Can he go for it again, or will the upper 41 drivers have anything to say about it? We're about to find out, because this is playoffs time at Texas. And alongside me to bring you all the action once again is Ryan Griffin with us in the booth. And honestly, my question still stands. Can anyone stop Devin Fair from getting a historic three-peat here at Texas Motor Speedway today? I'm going to default by saying it's going to come down to whoever can catch Devin Fair and actually put it to him on the racetrack. I mean, I mean, we saw Bobo Jones last race out at North Wilkesboro put up a good fight and just unfortunately lose it late in the race. So it's not to say that's not to say that he, you know, that somebody can't get up there and get it done. It's just until somebody actually goes up there and, and races him for it and, and actually with the challenge to him, I think you, you still have to look at Fair as, as the favorite coming in here. Absolutely. And, but he does have 12 drivers starting in front of him here today, and they're all going to be ch tough challengers to him, I'm sure. As we can now bring you the full starting lineup for today's 84-lap race at Texas. Jeffrey Finguy gets pole position, his second of the season. Roberto Crown Jr. starts alongside him. Zachary Fitzwater, surprised in the top five. He puts the 59 Dodge inside row two. Mark Davey and Christian Vargas round out the top five. But... Devin Fair, he starts back in 13th. This wasn't an issue for him at North Wilkesboro. I believe that's where he started there, and he was able to win that race. So, although this is a completely different animal from North Wilkesboro. High speeds, high banking, close quarters racing just like we had there. There's a lot that can happen here in Texas, so you really need to f wonder if Devin Fair is going to have a clean race today. Could he potentially shut out a few of his con of his fellow contenders here today? Two by two, taking us to the green flag. It's Jeffrey Finn guy and Roberto Crown Jr. Into the restart zone they come. The green flag is in the air, and for the 28th time, the one-up superstar series is green in 2023. And Finn guy gets off to a good start. He's leading that inside line. Brew turns one and two. This is the flatter portion of the track, but not by much. They're already building up to speeds of over 180 miles per hour as they exit the second turn. Finn guy looks like he's gonna. We have to maintain the lead here to three and four. Is there a uh, much double file for second behind him? And then Vargas trying to see if he can help Fitzwater to second so he can get around Crown. Looks like he'll hold third as they complete the first lap. Yeah, and it don't look now, but I think Fitzwater is getting racy here. He wants to lead this race. He gets to the inside of Jeffrey Finn guy. Fitzwater to the lead at Texas Motor Speedway uh, at, as we're halfway through lap number two. He's still side by side with the 92, but with a push from Christian Vargas, I think he'll be able to get the lead by the time they get to the line, and he's already there. And Finn guy, you know, it's not like we don't get to talk a lot about or haven't said much about him here as of lately, and well, he's feeling racy today as. Well, now he's going to get challenged by Vargas. Vargas is going to get underneath him and take the lead. So already three lead changes. <laughs> or two, uh, no, two lead changes in, in three laps we've had so far. Yeah, and remember, Christian Vargas won this race a year ago. As they go three wide for the lead, Brayton Varga ducks low. But he backs out of it wisely to prevent a, a, an early race collision that sidelines potentially many, many cars. So Vargas leads the third lap. Heading into lap four, Varga... It's the Vargas and Varga show here at Texas. They run one, two, but is this really much of a surprise to see Christian Vargas running up front here? Remember, he won this race last year. And I'm going to say, don't look now, but Vargas' teammate, we know we mentioned he started 13th. That's him right there, fourth car on the inside, inside line. Well, fourth in line there on the inside is a couple of cars are now clear, so they're not actually double file anymore. But yeah. <laughs> Devin Fair is up to P5 now, and he started P13, so Vargas may be leading, and he may be the defending winner, but he may have his teammate to contend with before the end of the day. 
And this could be the day that Christian Vargas, his hopes of a third consecutive championship come to an end. He's got to outscore Devin Fair by a lot in order to stay in contention for a third championship. But it's going to take a lot of effort. And the way Devin Fair is running today, it may be time to pass the baton on from Vargas to his teammate Fair. But there's still a lot of racing to go in this race. A lot can still happen. As Ben McDonald makes a move to the inside of Varga, this is for second place. And McDonald right now the highest running Chevrolet actually as he takes over that second position. And here comes Fair into the, he's in the inside the 19 by the 19 and up the third now. So <laughs> I think it is until, until we see somebody actually after we get up there and get after this 51 bunch. Uh, they really just seem to be proven week in week out that they are the team to beat. And <laughs> if anyone's got any shot at, at trying to take this championship, they're going to have to get up there and, and get up on the wheel and get around them. Yeah, at this, because he enters today with a 40 point lead in the championship, and that's only growing as this race progresses. He's already put in some solid running here to move up 10 places in the opening seven laps. He's already up to third, but he's got to get around Ben McDonald to join his teammate Vargas at the front of the field. And actually, we have all three Revolution Racing cars in the top half dozen. Zayden Davidson in that four machine has climbed his way up to six. And it just seems like this team is just, you, you mentioned the four car being in the top ten, they're just feeding off each other. Again, Vargas, the defending winner of this race and defending series champion. And of course, Fair is the current point leader and, and pretty much championship favorite. So it seems like they're just feeding off each other and getting each other better each, in, uh, each week. And yeah, that it's proving it to be pretty effective here because they're running first, third, and sixth. They fit sixth at the moment we're looking at the fastest lap actually Devin Fair and Ben McDonald have both run a 27.693 that is going to allow them both to share a point for fastest lap they're each going to get a point for that and Devin Fair that's going to mean the world to him he needs as many points as he can get in his run for the championship to hopefully block out as many of his fellow title contenders as he can after this race Got to try to limit the field he has to race over the coming weeks as far as for that, that championship. And here's a guy who's been making gains through the field. Sam Donato in the 77. He started 21st. He's gained 14 spots on the day to currently run in 7th place. So an impressive showing from 77. He is very much on the verge of championship elimination. But he's looking for trophy, race win trophies at this point. He's doing a very good job slicing his way through the field. Nick Ortiz, he started 18th. He's running in 8th right behind the 77. And here's Zayden Davidson, teammate to Devin Fair, who's getting... Oh, he almost got passed by Braden Varga. But, fit, but Varga had the back out. Fair has the run on the top. He keeps third. And with that defensive move, I guess you could call it, that pulled Fair right at, back up to the back bumper of McDonald in the, in the 12. So it, a move that was kind of a defensive move has kind of paid off a little bit offensively for Fair. And it's worked out for McDonald as well because here he comes to the inside of Christian Vargas to take the race lead away. Ben McDonald's had a rough playoffs. He's, uh, he's also on the verge of championship elimination, but he wants to win this race more than anything to keep himself in the hunt for as high a points position as he can possibly get by season's end. And here he comes past Christian Vargas, and he might bring Devin Fair with him, McDonald to the point at the end of lap 13. Well, these two, as we were looking at, when you looked at the fastest laps for the two fastest cars at that time on the racetrack, now they're gonna be one, two here possibly after this lap. As Vargas continues to race side by side with Fair. Yeah, and if, if I'm Jeff and Fair, I'm not really wanting to push the issue this early. There's still 70 laps to go. And of all the people to t take yourself out of contention with, you do not want it to be your teammate, or especially your team owner. So I think Fair is wisely backing out of that battle. He settles back in the third. That's a solid 40 points in the bank for him. And we continue racing. Lap number 15, McDonald, your leader. Yeah, right now it's you kind of see a little army of Toyotas up there at the front. You got we we've mentioned Vargas and Fair, but now look at Roberto Crown Jr. in the 881 is jumping to the mix, and as Donato. well as Donato as, as well. Donato, who we mentioned earlier. So Zayden Davidson's there as well. Yeah, the four car as well, the the team car to the the 51 and the uh, 
54. Which is going for the lead, this 54 is. So Vargas gets to the inside of McDonald for the race lead. They're side by side. Does Fair try and help his teammate? He can't anymore because look at Roberto Crown Jr. diving down the inside to try and get third and second place. Five cars now, seven cars under a blanket for the lead as we complete lap 16. Yeah, the, uh, the only other car up here that we haven't mentioned is Nick Ortiz, the other the other guy that was in the player at least early on in this 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 title fight until Fair kind of has kind of run away with it. Nick Ortiz knows he needs to try to seize an opportunity to, to get or try to gain back points on Fair, and while he's got to ride him on the racetrack at least for now. Yeah, I think I think. Uh, Davidson let Fair in there to give him a little break. He knows that 51 is racing for a championship. He does not want to be the one to deny Devin Fair that first chance at championship glory. Here comes Sam Donato, though. He started 21st in this race. He's already making a move for the runners-up spot, but Crown holds station for the moment. This is a great charge to the front of the field by the 77. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> What a drive from Sam Donato in the 77 machine. He's putting it together, clean runs, race after race. He's fallen a little bit out of to, to the wayside as far as championship contention goes, but he's not gonna be denied this race lead, I don't think, if all, if all goes to plan. But here comes Roberto Crown Jr. He's gotten around Vargas. He's bringing Donato with him. We got another lead change in Texas, and it's this time Roberto Crown Jr. to the point. Yeah, at this point, at least back to the sixth place, Davidson in the four. <laughs> it's really Ortiz versus the Toyota Brigade here, it seems like, at the front. And we've got another Toyota working its way to the front of the field. Steven Gale in that two car, who through 27 races this season still has yet to put together a top 10 finish. That is incredible considering he won the shootout to start the season back in February. He is he's a really good driver. He's just had wretched luck in that two car, but now he's running a solid eighth and he's potentially getting ready to put together his first top 10 of the season. He started 25th today. So Crown leads to Noto, Ortiz sitting third. And the battle is the battle between the teammates. It looks like Vargas kind of slid up there high is losing a couple of spots. Yeah, As McDonald looks to the inside of the four, and there is the two car that you mentioned, Gale. Yeah, he's had he's only led two laps all season, no top tens. And he's under fire now from McMillan to lose eighth. But this is still a, probably the strongest early run we've seen out of this two car much of the season, so. I, 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 for one, really want to see him get a top 10 this season. He's earned it m multiple times over, but he's had wretched luck to deny him such finishes. As we look a little further back, pole sitter Jeffrey Finn guy running just outside the top 10 in 11th. He br he's bringing teammate Dylan Young with him, and we got a battle for third on our hands. Fair underneath Ortiz. And Fair coming back now. Fair actually lost a couple of spots in that shuffle when the group caught the little three pack that he had with with Vargas and kind of uh, McDonald, so they would claw back up. And speaking of teammates trying to work their way back up there, uh, Finger looks like he may have picked up uh, his the car that he owns and his teammate Dylan Young, and they're going to see if they can try to bring their way break into the top top ten at this point. Right now, we're one forward actually in the top 10, and that is the... 91. The 91, excuse me, of uh, Ortiz. Yeah, so it looks like we've had another Ford get into some kind of trouble on the racetrack. Ryan Vasquez in the 89 has lost the rest of the field, and he's got a lot of damage on the right side of that 89 machine. So we didn't get a caution for his incident. So he's, we stay green. He has lost a lot of speed in that 89. Hopefully they can soldier on the rest of the day. Meanwhile, we have had a lead change. Sam DeNoro has taken over the top point as Fair and Crown now run side by side for second. Ortiz holding down fourth, Vargas in fifth. McDonald trying to hold off the four. Looks like he's going to get around the four. And the 21 Jake McMillan now back in or in the middle of this battle, as is the 66. I believe that is J.D. Martin. Yep. Has decided to join the battle as well. And 
that, all that has knocked Stephen Gale back out of the top 10. He currently runs in the 12th position. I'm sure he'll be able to get back up there eventually. But that brings Jeffrey Finguy back into the top 10 for the first time in a while. Devin Fair holds third. That's plenty good for him to extend his points lead to everyone, bar Roberto Crown Jr., who runs just in front of him in second. But while all this has been happening, Sam Donato is starting to grow out a lead. It's almost half a second already. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wondering too, we, for a second there, it looked like the, the field we had all the way back basically 10th, 11th for single file there for a second. Now we just got a couple of small battles here for position. We're pretty much about 10 cars within about a second and six tenths of each other right now. And Ortiz is not done. He's trying to get around Crown for second, while at the same time, he's already dispatched Fair for third. He wants to get second from Crown. But he's got a long way to go to get there because Crown has got such a good launch out of turn two. Now Fair's back underneath in the third. And you look at this beautiful crowd here that's shown up to see Sam Donato lead this race at Texas. They're, they're getting their money's worth, that's for sure. At least among these front runners right now, you're, you're having a good battle among positions. In fact, Crown, I think, is the furthest that anybody is, or excuse me, Donato, I think this is the first... This is the biggest lead we've seen so far today out of somebody. Brandon Crown is right there behind Donato. But as far as the front two cars having a nice little gap over the rest of the field is the teammates battle for third. Side by side for third. Here comes Vargas on fair, trying to take that spot away, and he does so. That moves the 54 back up to the third position. So strong run so far from the 54, and he needs a strong run today to stay in the hunt for a third consecutive championship but time I believe is running short for this 54 machine. He needs to put in a strong run while his teammate falters. I'm sure he'd love to see his teammate win a championship. He wants it himself as well. Coming off for turn four, Christian Vargas holds the final podium place as Crown and Donato start to streak away from everybody else. I mean, Hornets now a little bit here, basically at the back, back half of this top 10 right now. It's actually Finn guy that is listed as being 10th as of the previous lap, his teammate just in front of him. Then you have this 10 car, which I believe Freeman? Yep, that Freeman is. in the 10? Freeman's going to be in this car the rest of the season, driving this 10 car. Yes, that is correct. And then, of course, right behind Freeman, we've already talked about him today, is Gale. So it's a nice little hornet's nest right here for this 10th position. You know, a lot of guys... Bruce is trying to get into the top 10, and those trying to not fall out of the top 10. So... And the fans are definitely getting their money's worth today, even if we may not have the battle for lead at the moment up front. But definitely back here, we're seeing, seeing some battling going on. Yeah, and a couple of guys who've lost positions here. Mark Davey, Braden Varga, Stephen Gale. And how about Lane Sanders? He started in the ninth position. He is currently running 28th. That is going to certainly drop him out of the championship picture if he stays there. But I have a feeling this 87 car is dialing in the setup a little bit. Maybe once he comes in for a pit stop today, he'll be able to improve that car and bring itself towards the top 10 once again. So we make our way quickly through the rest of the field, check in on everybody. Back up front, though, it is Sam Donato that continues to lead this race. Strong run from Donato here, who keeps hold of the lead. They actually, the top four are starting to hold station. They're starting to pull away, actually, from Ben McDonald in that 12 car. They're both the Ventec cars, actually. McDonald and McMillan are holding fifth and sixth, but these four Toyotas are just rocket ships out in front of the field. They've already pulled a second's gap over everybody else. Truly remarkable. As Crown goes to the inside trying to get the lead away from Donato. Looks like they're going to be side by side for a little bit. I think Donato's going to get the edge off of turn two, and he does give the point back to the 77 who holds the lead for the moment. But we've got some very hungry cars behind here. As Dylan Young in the 29, you see him further back in that blue car. He's making a move to, into the top five. He's past McDonald, and he is going to start his charge after Devin Fair in that 51 machine because he needs to gain points on the 51 if he's going to have any hope at a championship in his rookie season. And so far, we've got 
quite the lead built up. And Dylan Young's actually starting to close back in on these guys. He's got quite he's gotten it he's gotten within a second now, actually. So these guys are all closing in on the race lead. And right now Vargas making a move for second, looks like, and Dylan Young's gonna have, have something to say about these guys before it's all said and done. Yeah, I know. I mentioned him earlier about Young being with his teammate, and it's worked at cracking into the top ten with his teammate. And he has really turned it up too in catching these front runners. And again, I, I heard you mention it too. It's like Denoto. It, this is the longest we've seen really anybody lead outside of the shuffling we've seen going on. So <laughs> it's interesting. Maybe Denoto might have the best card at this point. Although Fair is going to battle his teammate again here for third. And yeah, that 29 car is coming to the mix, as has the 21. Granted, he's been kind of latter half of the top 10 the whole way, but trying to see if he can maybe crack his way into the top five. And, he, and he's already done so. He's gained, uh, he's passed Christian Vargas to move up into fourth. And now he's working on the big, the big points leader himself, Devin Fair, trying to get that third spot away. And for Dylan Young, what a season he's already had. Two wins this season as a rookie. He's already locked up the Rookie of the Year award. He wants a championship to go with it. And he's now powered his way past Devin Fair, moved himself up into third. And now he's got his sights set on Roberto Crown Jr. in second. Yeah, I know anything I say about Dylan Young, uh, <laughs> I know the viewers at home are going to say, oh, well, you, he's, a, he's a teammate of yours, a Finn guy, because you run in the National Series. He runs a cup, but no, Young is... Definitely what a year he's had in that 29 and the, the effort he's put forth and the entire bunch there has put forth to, to give him a chance and be a part of these the playoffs this year and to have a little still, I, I, granted it's kind of, he's, he's, he needs a little more, he needs a little, a little help, a little issue or two maybe out of fair to really get close to getting back into the title fight, but at least he's making the most of it today is he was going to go after that second position on Crown. I can see him diving already looking on the 81. So I think, yeah, he is going to get second here. So maybe he's got something to go after that 77 of uh, Denoto. And right now, Devin Fair is dropping positions. He's all the way back to seventh now in that 51. As McDonald fights him for six, Stephen Gale waiting in the wings as well to try and get by the 51. So quite a free fall downwards for Devin Fair, but we're, ju we're just now about to pass halfway in this race, so there's plenty of time left for him to try and make make a comeback in the, through the field. But Dylan Young, look at the rocket ship under his Ford. He's built, he's pulling, he's already cut the gap to San Donato in half, just, just in that one lap alone. He is flying. Yeah, that 29 is on a rail right now, and he is reeling in Donato. And we may be having a lead change here before too long. I mean, it's a crowd still for third as the crowd holds that spot right now over Vargas and McMillan. But even I mentioned McMillan back in, now into the top five. Uh, he's another one that was at the back edge of the top ten. It's kind of made a little more, his presence a little more known here at the end of this, this, this cycle. So we'll see if he can get up here and maybe challenge at some point. And, Looks like Ferry was able to, to stem the bleeding and kind of hang out there in six. So we'll see if he can, he can make a charge back up here before the end. You, as long as Ferry's in the top ten, you really can't count him out of, of being a player late in the race. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying about McMillan, he wanted a stronger day out of North Wilkesboro last time out. He won the pole there, led the opening three laps, but got shuffled out and finished in just outside the top 15. But... He's doing a strong job here today. He's running in the top five, doing what he needs to do here. And hopefully he'll be able to stay on the fringes of championship eligibility after this race. But after this race, we've only got two more to go. And if Devin Fair continues the form he's been on, he could lock it up after Rockingham next week. You know, you know that's exactly what the 51 team is trying to accomplish. They're just, they want to put themselves in a position after this race so that they could can't clinch it next race out of Rockingham. So well, we'll have to see what happens here. I mean, Dylan Young is on the charge on this 77. And like I said, it's not going to be too much longer before I think we see a lead change here. Unless 
Uh, unless he gets, unless he loses a little bit here behind the 77, I, I think we're going to see a lead change here before too long. Look at how close he's made it onto the 77 as Vargas goes for third on Crown, and he might bring Fair with him. This is a strong run out of Revolution Racing. Davidson might have fallen off a little bit, but the two playoff challengers for that team running in the top five. As you're right, Dylan Young has closed right up to the back of Sam Ginotto. Is he going to try and make a move through three and four? He's got a fender on him, but I think he's going to stick tight behind the Ginotto machine for now. And I mentioned earlier about Fair trying to recover back. He did end up getting around the 21 of McMillan, so now he's in fifth. Like going back to six. So while well, that goes on and that Dyson goes on back there for basically third through third through six, you got the battle for the lead that's shaping up. I'm telling you, Young is going to make a move on the 77. It's just a matter of when he does make the move. And How about now? Which might be right here. So here they come, side by side through the quad oval. Dylan Young does lead that lap. Will he be able to clear Denoder going into one? He dives it off into turn one. Meet. With Denoto up high, Denoto starting to pull up back alongside the 29. Could the outside line give him the advantage out of two? It does. Denoto clears for the lead once again. Well, officially there was the lead change at the line, but Denoto looks like he's going to hang on to the lead, though. This young still right up on that back bumper, just staying close. <laughs> Yeah, so that technically counts as two lead changes because Young got it at the line and Donato took it right back. So these two are putting on quite an impressive show and they have gapped the field by quite a big margin. They are a second and a half ahead of third place Devin Fair. So, and here comes Young once again trying to dive down the inside, but he's got no room and Donato holds the spot for a moment. And for the moment, Donato in the 77 gun going to hold him off. Fair, meanwhile, has taken over third, and he's got at least a couple car length gap now on his teammate. As they, both uh, Vargas and McMillan, have dispatched Crown to move into fourth and fifth, respectively. And they're going to go side by side now in their fight for fourth place. But McMillan, I don't think, has the horsepower to hold on to. Christian Vargas or does he? He's making a move down the inside once again. He looks like he's great on corner entry, but Vargas has the continued speed and momentum to hold on to it. And as far as manufacturers go, you got the young in the Ford, the or young in the <laughs> young in second is the highest running Ford. Obviously, Denoto and the Toyota leads, and McMillan is the highest running Chevrolet at the moment in that battle with Vargas for fourth. But it's just interesting to see, you know, all around the racetrack, there's, you can find some battles, whether it's for fourth or for a lead or even back, I see back there behind for for seventh between Gale and uh, J.D. Martin are going at it there for seventh. So and the fans are getting a pretty good show here today. And we're closing in on 30 laps to go. And I would expect these guys to continue to put on such a, a quite a good show for the fans that have turned out here in Texas. Great, great performances by everybody involved. As it looks like our our pit cycles already began, Patrick Smith and Ryan Vasquez looks like look like they're the ones who have committed to pitting early in this race. And doesn't look like anybody's coming in right after them, but I would expect pit stops to start very soon. Yeah, I noticed Young has actually lost a little bit off of the 77 not much but a little bit off of Donato at the moment I'm wondering if it's at you know we're just ending the the end of the cycle here and you start to lose a little bit here to our leader Donato looks like the top two are staying out but we got our first taker among the leaders and it's Roberto Crown Jr. oh Polanski with quite a bold entry that that's very that, I don't know man <laughs> that <laughs> That's a, certainly one way to get into the pit lane. We'll see if that sticks. I, I'm, some tells me that's highly good. I highly doubt that that's going to stay, but Polanski, you know, just... I, mean, I guess two, his GPS I guess his GPS told him too late to hit pit road. To his credit, he only has three races left in his career. He might as well make something out of them. But here, yeah, comes, true. Yeah, but here comes everybody else down pit road to complete this pit cycle. Patrick Smith and Ryan Vasquez, of course, stay out because they pitted earlier. And we're following these leaders on the pit road. We'll see what happens out of it. 
And this is where you want to be careful when you got two different groups of cars coming to pit road. You know, one's leaving, the other's coming in. You have to be careful. You don't want to see any collisions on pit road. Which I think I see one back there. For, midway through, oh, pit lane! Oh my goodness, that... That was a big moment in pit lane. Yeah, the caution's out. The caution has come the, out. The for, caution is out. The middle of the cycle. And it, I believe it was for that pit lane collision between it looks like Chase Christ in the 55, Ricky Freeman Jr. in the 10, and Miles Mashburn in the 72. Caution has flown for the first time on lap 55, and this has thrown a big wrench into everybody's race. Yeah, we'll have to sort out here who is going to be the oh, leader. Gotta, but, oh, and another incident in the back. And it's Polanski with Brandon Beal. Oh, man, look at... Oh, those leaders, they were so lucky to not have hit that 18 car. That might have just been the moment that defined Devin Fair's season right there. Look how close he came to hitting Polanski there. Devin Fair right now... <laughs> I think De Devin Fair at this point, I, I think he went from, oh my god, and somebody's on the roof, is that that's 70? Car that's Carter, Emma Carter in the 70. Bobo Jones, last week's standout at North Wilkesboro, looks like he's going to be done for today as well. We've had at least three separate incidents on, on both on track yeah, and we, in we the We may base. not be done yet, There's, I can't tell who it's slow, there's a blue car that's slow. We saw oh. in the front straightaway and almost caused another incident. Yeah, you saw it earlier Zayden Davidson, his car destroyed. He was having such a good day in that four car. That's going to be, be a tough break for him. But the caution flag now flies, and it's going to take a little bit of time to sort out the running order here because it looks like Stephen Gale's actually going to assume the lead of this race. He must have been out in front when, at the moment of caution, Whoa, and Aaron Hall almost caused another crash with his teammate. Oh, man. Man, what a mess here in the middle of the cycle of green flag stops. Started with the incident on pit road and then just snowballed. Oh, it absolutely did. And, yeah, there's Zayden Davison out of the race, and you hate to see that because he was having a really good day. Yeah, it looks like coming into the pits, it looks like Freeman actually got caught between Mashburn and, oh my goodness, that that's not something you normally see in any form of racing on pit road, but especially in this series, that's that's new to me. Yeah, this is oddities, but again, it's what I was just literally getting ready to talk about as we were in the middle of that cycle. You gotta watch cars coming on, cars coming off, and... And now that happened, and now yeah, here's what happened. See to what happened here on the back stretch. Oh, and he he got hooked to Brandon Beal, and they just come. To, oh, Beal rode the wall a little bit there. And here's where I was talking about. Now look at the leaders; they come so close to having fair. their well, oh, not so much fair, but I, there was the one just before fair that yeah, that was Crown nailed him. Yeah. Crown, yeah. And that was Polanski's teammate too, and Roberto Crown Jr. That was that was insane. And then looking. Now, at the third incident of the race, it's just a big stack up for the caution. Bobo Jones has nowhere to go. He plows into Emma Carter, sends her upside down. Zayden Davidson gets a lot of damage as well. Look at all these cars with a lot of damage. This is not how we wanted this day to go for any of them because they were doing good good work today. And I think we may have just seen the Talladega equivalent of Texas. Yeah, this is the yeah, this is, is the, yeah, this is the big stack. Up. That was, yeah, there's that blue car you were talking about, Felix Anderson. Looks like he was. Yeah, like, that's where that's why he was slow though. He got caught up in the Emma Carter and and Zay Davids. He got caught up in that mess off of four, so he was slow trying to get going again. And then Bobo Jones just had nowhere to go. He plowed into the seventy, and that's all their race is done. But now Stephen Gale leads this race. How's how about that for a twist? We now have twenty five laps to go. And Stephen Gale has a top... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, here we are talking about Gale. Oh, he hasn't yet had a top 10 finish. And <laughs> he's the one that's going to benefit out of that, all that chaos. He could even come out of here with a win if he's lucky enough. But he's got a lot of racing to go, and he knows that. It's been a long time since Stephen Gale's been to victory lane, and he knows that too. Of course, he won in the shootout earlier this season, but that was a non-points race. He wants more than anything to get back to victory lane in a points-paying event to end that long winless drought that dates back to 2020. But 
now we've got two cars in front of the leader who have or on the tail end of the lead lap patrick smith and ryan vasquez they were the first two on pit road and this caution probably hurt them quite a bit because now they're gonna have to do a lot of defending the rest of the day the other thing we're gonna have to throw in the other extra element is when we actually restart, you're gonna have lap cars to the inside. So now you're gonna have lap traffic that's gonna play a role in how this lead shapes out. Very true, and that is not going to be an easy task for everybody involved. Somehow, Polanski's able to continue in this race. That's an impressive feat in and of itself. But he's gonna be a moving chicane the rest of the day. But we're gonna come. We're gonna get a restart, hopefully in the next lap or so. And Stephen Gale's gonna be your leader. Can he hang on for his first win in over three years? I know his big, his biggest competition is gonna be the two that are actually gonna be restart behind him. That is the 77 Donato and the 29 of Young, who pretty much, at least in this part of the race, have been the two best cars. And then obviously, you know, we've seen Fair up there as well, Crown. And uh, Finn guy now up to six. You know he's he's recovered from. You know started on the pole, kind of lost ground early, and has been trying to gain that ground back since. Well, he's six, and then you have we got some newcomers. Seventh. Newcomers actually in the top ten: Jeff Bolton and William Brock running eighth and ninth. And uh, then Jake McMillan just hangs on to tenth. So again, what's as crazy as that green flag cycle and the caution and everything that happened? We'll have to see if the race. Do we settle back to where we were before, where it was basically Donato and Young, or can Stephen Gale actually hang on here and put his name into the hat for maybe winning this race? I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. He's had a good car. It's just the question is, does he have a great car? Does he have a car that can win this race? Because while he is going to be the leader coming to this restart, he is not going to be in clean air. And we've st we're going to find out, I guess, coming to this restart, if he can hang on to it. We'll find out. We'll have basically 23 to go when we get the green here. A lot of racing still left. So that's basically a, about a quarter of the race left. So we'll see what happens as they come to the green and they got the green. Smith takes off in the 04. Granted, he is tailing the lead lap. And Devin Fair jumps to that inside at the earliest opportunity. He knows that that's where, that's where the prime position is going to be. Let's see if he can make any positions down there. So far, it's working. He's gotten past Crown. He's gotten past he, Young. He, he, I think he's going to get the lead here, honestly. Yeah, because Vasquez is holding up everybody in the outside line. Look at that. Devin Fair in three quarters of a lap is shot from fifth to first as Mashburn peels for pit road. But not only Fair, the Whoa. car direct. Oh, Crown, did he save it? Wow. Oh, wow. Jeff Bolton and Roberto Crown Jr. Damn. Takes tip of the hat to those two for quite the save through the trial. Right. We've seen that last, we saw that last year, and that has derailed people's races. But those two managed I, I was, to save I was it. Just, I was just getting ready to say the comeback for Finn Guy, who had, who had taken over the third position. And Crown, I, I don't know who it was he made contact with, but that was a heck of a save to keep that car from coming back into traffic hard. And now, I tip my hat to that 81. And now Stephen Gale's taking the lead back because Vasquez is holding up everybody that's not him. And now Devin Fair is going to get to his inside and hopefully clear. And he's going to bring Finn Guy with him. This is going to hurt guys like Donato and Young, though. They're going to fall to fall to the back of this train. But look at the lead Stephen Gale has built now. And Gale taking advantage again of that lap traffic, which I mentioned before the restart. I thought that was going to be a roll, and it certainly has so far as Finn Guy's going to get to the inside affair now Move with him. help from Crown. Yeah, moves him up to second. So Finn Guy's not out of this race yet. No one is really, but they've got to track down Stephen Gale, who's led more laps today than he has all season up to this point. So a great race going for Stephen Gale. Let's see if he can hold on to it. Finn guy is closing in fast. Well, you, we, sometimes in motorsports, it's about, you know, sometimes you need one race, just one race to go your way. You can change your season. A Gale who has not had a top 10 finish this year, that little wacky incident that happened under the caution for in the middle of the green flags pit stops has put him in this position. Now let's see if he can, he actually make something of it, you know? 
another thing to keep in mind, Anderson Reed has taken the fastest lap point away from Jeff and Fair and Ben McDonald, so that's one less point Fair has in his bank. He needs to go and gain more positions to get more points. He's got 40 right now. He hasn't led yet today, but I have a feeling that could change very soon as Owen oh, go three wide for the lead. Yeah, I guess you talk about him wanting to get the points back. I think he's going for the win right now. Oh what my a, God. And he made it work. That, absolutely incredible stuff from Devin Fair. He wants this championship. He wants his third win in a row. And I don't think anybody's going to deny him. He's got, Finn Guy's going to try. I would say don't say anybody's going to deny because that 92 is hanging out of that back bumper. And he wants the lead now. Only once in Superstar history has a driver won three consecutive races, and that and that t driver too was driving the number 51 for Revolution Racing. That, of course, was Stephen Hunter back in 2021. Devin Thayer looking to, uh, to equal the great Hunter's feat, but now he's facing pressure from Stephen Gale for second spot. What a race we're having in the closing stages! I tell you what, despite. <laughs> Despite what put us under the yellow there with the, in the middle of the green flag cycle and everything that happened under the yellow, the racing on track where we've been under green has been spectacular today. And Stephen and Gale still, guy leads it. He still finds a way to hold off Devin Fair for the second spot. I, as long as Gale keeps holding up Fair, I think Finn Guy's in a great position here. And not only that, with the way the lap traffic is going right now, Gale's not entirely out of the possibility of possibly winning this race either. <laughs> yeah, because now Finn Guy's got Stanley Andrews in the 24 to deal with, and Stojanovic, and Parker, Reed, and Victor Nunez. They're all trying to stay on the lead lap, but Finn Guy is taking no prisoners. He's already lapped Andrews. He's got Stojanovic to deal with now. He's got that lap car, but he's got a blue deuce that's right on his back bumper and closing quick. Gale, he's got, he sees an opportunity in front of him. He's going to try to seize any opportunity he can, especially for a guy that, as, you, as we've said, has not finished in the top ten this season. Truly remarkable racing from Texas, as we now have 13 laps to go. Gale's all over the back of Finn Guy. Fair's all over the back bumper of him. Crown's all over the back bumper of Devin Fair. We've got six cars nose to tail for the race lead. But hell, I'd, I'd even argue... Oh, Ortiz, <laughs> oh excuse Ortiz me, oh, the 91 is... Ortiz is falling off, I don't know. Yeah, he's coming to pit road. There's an issue. Him, but there's, yeah. yeah, there's an issue with that 91. He's pulling it into the pit lane. We'll try and catch up with him in a moment. But Devin Fair making a move for the lead on Finn Guy into one. The last, last race out at North Wilkesboro, he took the lead late in that race and went out to winning it. Now he's trying to see if he can do the same thing here at Texas. He made a, <laughs> a kind of take your breath move to go three wide to take the lead. And now after he lost it, he's seeing if he can try to get back now as we see Ortiz on pit road. The, the tale of two cities there, you know, we talk about fair and, you know, Ortiz was everyone's hoping to put it to, to fair today and Looks like it's not going to happen today. And look, they're coming up to lap Jared Belansky here. This could be a big moment because here comes, he's holding up Finn Guy that shoots fair to the point, coming to 10 laps to go. Actually, that's going to hold up fair and as, in addition to Finn Guy as well as poor Stephen Gale is going to get held behind the 18 as well. Now it's Roberto Crown Jr. up to second spot. Where did he come from in the 81? He's making, trying, going to try and make a move for his second career win. He almost won this race last year. He's trying to redeem that this year. But Devin Fair working really hard to get past this lap car of Jason Parker in the 76. And he clears. That is going to put a lap car between Fair and Crown. We're closing in on the end already. We talk about the the breathtaking moves, and we I, I mentioned Fair's three wide move for the lead there when he took the lead at the one point. Well, Crown had that great save, and now he's running second. So I guess this must be the race of just the breathtaking move to put you in in a position to have a shot at it. It looks like we got caution. Out. Caution has come out for the second time in this race. It looks like Jared Polanski again has been involved in a crash, and this is going to slow the field down. We're going to have a really late race restart now. Oh. 
Well, yeah, it's going to come into a factor because they're, they're not going to have flat cars to the inside, but there could be cars between Fair and Crown. Between Fair and Crown. So, so that's, yeah, that saves. You have to keep an eye on that and how many cars are there. Yeah, that saves Anderson Reed and Victor Nunez. Yeah. They get their laps back. But this is not what Devin Fair wanted to see. He wanted this race to go green the rest of the way. He was so close to his third career win. Now he's got to endure yet another restart. I don't know. I think <laughs> the drive of the willpower out of that 51 right now. I still can't believe he made that three wide move work off a of four where he was able to clear the two of them and, and maintain the point. And I mentioned, you know, Crown running second, the save he had down the front straightaway. It's like, <laughs> I guess we're going to have plenty to talk about after this race in terms of the on-track racing and what we've seen so far today. So Polanski was just terribly slow and Aaron Hall just rear ends him. The speed difference was incredible going into turn one there. <laughs> yeah, Polanski's gonna be like, thank God it's my last race at Texas and <laughs> just not having a great day today. And I guess you could say that was kind of the exclamation point on it. So you see, Polanski's coming off a of turn four. He's markedly slower than everybody around him. And Aaron Hall just had nowhere to go. Rear ends the 18. He gets it comes down into the 53 of Anderson. And Polanski, he, this has been a rough race, but hopefully he can have a proper send off in the last two races because he's really earned it. Yeah, and Polanski, it, it wasn't as if he was being an erratic. I mean, he was basically trying to hold his line, he knew he was slow. And just unfortunate that, that Hall just ran up on him so fast, Hall just couldn't get, get it turned to, to get underneath him and just clipped him instead. And unfortunately, you know, it ended, permanently ended Polanski's day and um, pretty much uh, ruined uh, the run that I think Hall was probably having. So, but now we get ready, now we get ready for the restart here and. The one thing that Fair has to his favor is he does have one car between himself and Crown as yeah, a buffer. Yeah, Parker in the 76, he's got that buffer between. So that's going to be... He, that, that 76 is going to be Devin Fair's best friend right here. And for Now, for Crown, what he has to try to do on this restart is he wants to get rid of that 76 as quickly as possible to give himself a shot at Fair here. Because we're only going to have a, we're only going to have a couple of laps to go, so Check he's got to try to get it done as quick as possible. Because if there is another caution, that very well could be that very well is going to be the race. So yeah, next flag is going to end the race after the screen flag comes back out, which will be in one lap's time. So we are going to have a four-lap sprint to the checkers here at Texas with Devin Fair going for three in a row at is your leader Roberto Crown Jr. runs second behind Jason Parker who's a lap down Jeffrey Finguy runs third Ben McDonald fourth he's recovered nicely today Sam Donato led the, he's led the most laps so far today he's running fifth Mark Davey Duke Anzac Stephen Gale Felix Anderson AJ Jones completing the top 10 what a mixed up running order we have now and this could be the battle of uh I guess the red and white cars uh Fair up front in the red and white, and then you got Crown and the primarily white. Finn guys in the red car, and then <laughs> McDonald in the <laughs> primary white. So, uh, hey, if you're a fan of red and white colors, this is your day, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're going to find out very soon, because we're coming to a restart, to what is going to be the final restart of this race with Devin Fair in the lead hopefully we can get Brutus without issues but this is no limits Texas we'll see what happens from here off our turn four pace cars off we're getting ready to restart this one. it's gonna be all about this restart who gets the best one between fair and crown fair looks like takes off pretty good crown looks like he got a stack either, up but unfortunately looks like, looks, like, looks like he got a stack up further back I think it's the 83 of Ansac once again causing problems. Look at James Ellison. He ducks to the inside four wide for position. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at this mess. 
I think Anzac's lost a gear. I think he's lost a gear, and they're wrecking behind him. They're wrecking behind Duke Anzac, and this is going to be the race right here. Well, I think, think Fair's going to hang on. We're looking. We're gonna go look for. At the, look for. Look who's got the. Got it. Oh, look at the margin. Jeffrey Finn guy had almost caught Devin Fair, but the caution came out in the nick of time. Devin Fair, if he can hang on for three laps under caution, is gonna get three in a row today. A Jeffrey Finn guy who, as we said, you know, started on pole and slipped back, was trying to recover his way back up there, just came. Basically, within Honduras of being able to recover. Yeah, something was amiss with that 83. He was slowing up everybody. We saw it. We've seen this before. It happened at Michigan earlier this year, where the 83 missed a gear, and that we saw what happened there. And we got some cars coming in. They're not able to make the distance for whatever reason. And one of them, Stephen Gale, who was gonna have a oh, top poor ten. Steve, poor Gale. He was. He was yeah, that two car. Had, well, that two car even was a threat at one point to possibly win this race, and unfortunately, it's gonna come. It's gonna come up short. Yeah, that's that's just t heartbreaking for Stephen Gale. It, he was gonna finish seventh if everything had gone right, which would have been a best finish of the season for him. And look at this running order. That bold move from James Ellison. It's gonna pay off. He's gonna get eleventh if it finishes like this. Yeah, we're waiting for the fuel to make this last basically lap and a half under caution. And uh, what more can you say about this 51 team? Uh, three straight weeks. And this race wasn't exactly a cakewalk either. It's not like it was a, it's not like it was an easy one to get here. He didn't even lead the most laps today. Exactly. It's 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 again, it's like I said earlier when I saw him, you know, still hanging around the top 10. He may not be leading, but don't count them out because they just seem to have a habit of showing up when it matters. And it. Well, here you go. We're going to come to the white flag here under yellow with uh, with Fair ready to take another one. And keep this in mind. These are three completely different racetracks Devin Fair has won at in the last three weeks. C flashback to Denver. That was, a, that was a very big road course that Devin Fair went on. Go forward to North Wilkesboro, a very tiny short track. And now this high speed intermediate in Texas. This is, I believe it's going to be Devin Fair's first win on a mile and a half, actually. Well, he, he definitely earned it today, you know, race the racing we saw today, and we'll, we'll see if we can get a replay, actually, of, of the race back to the line to see Finn Guy's charge. We but, will get you a replay, at least, of what brought um, out this final caution after the checkered flag flies. But yes, Devin Fair. But, but, but like I was say, you, you got to give credit to this 51 team and what they've done the last three weeks. And there's a reason why he's the points leader. There's a reason why they're in contention to win this championship. And while he may not clinch it today, he's definitely, he's, definitely put himself in a, a good possibility to clinch it next week. And he's going to shut out at least half the field today by winning this race for sure. And that is going to be a big accomplishment. He's going to lock out his team owner, who's won the last two championships. He's going to eliminate Christian Vargas from championship contention, but I don't think he's going to mind. I don't think Vargas is going to mind that, because he's going to see his young protege, Devin Fair, coast his way to a, a third victory in a row, and what could possibly be a first championship coming along the way. So... As we slowly round turns three and four for the final time under the caution flag, Christian Vargas, he's been a great champion over the last two years, but his reign is over. We are going to, he's going to pass the torch to Devin Fair, who it, it could very well clinch it next week. He wins for the third week in a row at Texas Motor Speedway. His fifth career win, his fourth in the season. This is going to be a great championship celebration if he's able to hold on to it next week at Rockingham. Jeffrey Finn guy comes up so, oh so close to his third win of the season. He finishes second today. Ben McDonald, third. A great drive from him. And Roberto Crown Jr., likewise. He's the closest of the championship contenders to stay within striking distance of fair today. He comes on fourth. Roberto Crown Jr. 
completes the top five, or Sam Denota completes the top five, but he is mathematically out of the championship hunt, as is Mark Davey, who finished sixth. But look further back in the top ten. Daniel Bouchard, we didn't mention him all day, but he comes home seventh. Eric Monaco started last, by the way, and he comes home eighth today. Braden Varga, strong top ten run for him, his first since his victory at Vermont. And Dylan Young completes the top ten, with James Ellison right behind in 11th place. But the real story is that final restart and what in the world could have happened to that 83. We'll get to a replay now of what brought out this final caution of the night here at Texas Motor Speedway. So it looks like a fairly orderly restart coming to the restart zone. Anzac was going to restart in seventh place, but just like it was at Michigan, he just doesn't go when the when the flag drops. You said initially it could be, it might be that he lost a gear that he was as he was coming through because of the way the car just yeah, cause swallowed. It's a, yeah, because oh man, Ellison's move is all the more impressive the second time we look at it. But yeah, Duke Ansex, his telemetry shows he's stuck in third gear right here. Yeah, and then unfortunately everybody behind him is just, it's just too many. You're trying to squeeze too many cars in too little space and. Mayhem was us. Patrick Smith tore up. Brandon Beal. Ashburn was torn up. William Brock. Oh, Ryan Vasquez again. And for the second year in a row, Miles Mashburn ends Texas with a damaged vehicle at the end of the day. But, yeah, Jeff Bolton got some damage in that. Lane Sanders. Lane Sanders. He's now out of the championship as well. But what a race, regardless, that we've seen here today. Devin Fair really put the bit between his teeth he he is your winner today and he's a one week away potentially from securing his first one-up superstar and, series and, championship and i'll i'll say this the last three weeks it would not at all surprise me to see fair go out there and get the record get four in a row as he's clinching the title you know if you're gonna clinch it clinch it in style and he very well could rattle off his four straight win to officially you know like Officially, like, I clinched it, you know? Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me either. So, from Ryan Griffin and from myself as well, we say goodbye from Texas Motor Speedway. We'll see you again in a week's time at Rockingham for the penultimate race of the season. Devin Fair, we said at the top of the show, he is on a roll, and I'll ask the same question again. Can anyone stop the 51? <laughs>